Hello and welcome back. So today we're going to talk about how to deploy updates to your endpoint. So today um, I thought I'd go over all the steps you needed now that we've covered all of the backend component. So now that that's all working and got that configured. So now what I've done is I went over to um, all software updates and I have a Windows 8.1 in my environment so I thought I'd use that as an example. So I go click over here to add criteria and I've selected um, you know the um, superseded product as you can see uh, bulletin ID if it's required which is up here a bulletin ID required I also selected um, um, expired and product and superseded so those were the components I selected and I did a search and it came with these two um, updates that are required now this one was back in August 2016 and this was back in uh, when it was released 15 so um, I'll have to do another software update scan to see what's new on that machine but I thought just for the purpose of understanding the process and the steps that you have to do just to, to get the updates out there um, so right now I'm just going to show you this process so I've got a couple updates that needs to be installed as you can see um, um, if you go back in here, you'll see they have one that's compliant, one that's required, two not required. So it could very well be, um, like I said, I only have one 8.1 in my environment. However, it does say that it's required. One of them is installed, one of them is uh, not installed. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this one. It looks like this one's already there because it says it's compliant, even though it says two not required. So I'm going to go with this one, but it doesn't hurt to select both of them. There's only two updates. So if it's already installed, it won't reinstall it. It'll just be compliant, which is fine because that's how the compliancy works. That's one of the things I like about SVCM and how, you know, without even running any reports, uh, you get this compliancy uh, already reporting, uh, which is really nice. So what we want to do now is just right click on these two. We're going to create a software update group. So we're going to call this Windows 8.1 updates. Zoom. I hate when that happens. Updates. Uh, and then we cl click on uh, create. Oh, I think I already have a group called that. So let me do, um, let's change this to Microsoft updates create okay I guess I already have um oh it doesn't like the 8.1 so we're just gonna call it uh, underscore one uh, uh, updates there we go create did not like the dot so we're gonna create this group now this group will have these two updates so we go over to update group now, as you can see, I've done this a few times, um, so that one I just call it. Um, so this one, if you double click on this, it'll it'll show you um, these two updates are part of this group. So we go back over to update groups. Let's see what's in this other update group because I know it's been a while. Um, yeah, it's just that one. Okay, so let's go back over here. So now what we need to do, we need to download these updates because right now it's just not downloaded so we're going to come over here we're going to go create a folder called 8.1 or like uh, let's call a new folder um, windows 8 i'm just going to call it windows 8 updates okay so now we got that folder created so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and download um, these i just right click on that big group and then say download so we're going to create a new pa um, we can create a new deployment package. We're just going to call this Windows um, December. Let me do Windows. Uh, let's do Windows eight updates uh, December. So I'm going to put uh, December. 20, um, 2017 um, 
There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the uh, path. Apps. Updates. And then I'm going to select that folder. And there it is. So then I'll go ahead and click on next. Now I want to add a distribution point, so we go ahead and click on this one. It's, like I said, it's a small environment, so I just have one. I, I am going to create another video on how to build and create a distribution point, like a separate one. So I'll be adding that later, but for now, um, I'm just going to use our primary site server as our distribution point. So I'm just going to select that one. And then I just like to select automatically. There we go. And next. And then, of course, I'll just do next here. And just make sure that when you're in here, you make sure only English is selected or whatever language you're um, wanting to download is selected and then do, and then make sure you have that replicated in your WSUS. But here I just select English, go next. And here's a summary and then you go next and then it will go through the process of downloading those two updates. So I'm gonna pause this video and I'll be right back. All right, and as you can see, it's now successfully downloaded these two updates. I'll go ahead and click on close. So now we've done that. So now we'll go over to the package that we created. So now we want to distribute the content. So if you already selected the um, distribution point, it should have already distributed the content. So if we go to content status, we can see that right now it's one targeted. Okay, so it's successful. So because it's already on the primary search server, it really didn't take that long. But you want to wait until if you selected a certain distribution point that's in a different site or whatever, you want to make sure you completely, the distribution has been completed and you can check and make sure it's green. Sometimes you'll see in progress for a while. So once it's all completed, then you're ready to go ahead and deploy those updates. So now we're going to go back over to software library. Now that that's done, we're going to go here. Now we don't want to do it from the package standpoint because you can just distribute. Uh, you go to the group and you click on this. This is what we want to deploy. So we're going to click um, break before we do that. I just want to do something real quick now. I'm going to cancel this for a second. I want to go back up to asset and compliance and go to my device collection. Now I want to make sure I've got one use eight Windows 8 computers. That's my Windows 8 computer. Very good. So I basically like to make my collection based on the operating systems and it's a query based collection. So I have Windows 10, I got 2012, I got 8. So um, when you go into these collections, yeah, now you can make static or um, uh, you know, just direct membership collection if you want to. Like if you have a special, uh, like uh, the, uh, medical devices that can't be passed or anything that wants, you want to be, or maybe some exclusions like machines that can't be targeted, then you want to create a collection called like exclusion group or something. You put all the machines that can't be targeted and you just make sure that when you create your other collection, you include, you can say exclude, in this, let's say I want to exclude another collection within this Windows 8 machines to make sure that in this deployment of Windows 8 devices that I have out there, it will exclude that other collection that cannot be patched and it will exclude those machines. So that's another way that you can get around excluding machines that can't be targeted for updates. So right now I have a query based collection and in this query, I'll take a quick look at it so you can see all the different things that you can create. You can create all kinds of different queries in here. So in this case, I have is equal to a specific version of, of um, uh, Windows, which is this. And then I should probably also add, you know, that it, I, and you can also say, and is a client, number one, because you might have some devices out there that don't have an agent installed yet. And so those, those will still be sitting in your unknown state. And you don't want to see those because it's, you you got enough to troubleshoot as it is, so it's just better to just exclude all the clients. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add that criteria now so you can see um, how you do that. So right now I'm going to do system resources. That's where you want to start. So uh, system resources. My okay, system resource. And we want to add client uh, client right here. And then we go, it's equal to one. That means it's a client. Okay, so now it has to be um, Windows 8 plus it has to have a client. So that's what I only want in this collection. So that's a good way to kind of exclude all of those other machines that are not an SCC client and they won't dump in that unknown, uh, unknown status because they can't determine what those machines are. So now I'm gonna go ahead and update this membership because I made a change to the um, query. 
Now it's still going to show that one computer because uh, it's still doing an hourglass. Let me go back to that. So now it's doing an hourglass. So that little you can see right here. It's doing a little little thing here. Now sometimes when you come out of here, come back and there it goes away. Okay, so, so you can see that my query is still working because I still have one machine in there. Again, it's a client. It's a Windows 8 machine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to target that updates to that update group that I just created to this collection. So let's come back over here. We're going to go to this group. We're going to go ahead and deploy. And I'm just going to leave it to default. I mean, you can call it whatever you want to call it. You can call it December monthly updates, or, or you can call it, let's just uh, common ones of Windows 8 monthly um, or December updates. Uh, that way I know, uh, and then I browse to a collection that I want. So let's go eight computers, Windows 8. Um, and there you go. And required, so you can make it available or required, but since updates are required, I'll leave it uh, required. Uh, and then we're going to just go as soon as possible because it's a lab environment. Now again, you can you can set it whatever specific time you want, but since it's my lab environment, I'm going to just show all notification because I want to... Um, now, updates do require a restart, so I'm going to say go ahead and... Now, I could suppress that by saying, hey, I don't want to, I don't want to force the update, but it's going to, you know... Now, if I, if I don't select update, it's going to allow the users the option to defer the update as much as they want. But if I say, hey, this is a required, then that means they only get an hour and a half. So this is an hour and a half. This is, hey, I can defer my updates as many times as I want. So, and you can also suppress it for certain workstation or whatever. Um, but, you know, because updates are required, now depending on what your InfoSec team requires, you have to kind of listen to what they say because they're sort of like, but, you know, in the end, every machine needs to restart in order to complete the update uh, process. So, in this case, I'm just going to just do this right now so you can see what that uh, looks like when you don't click on System Restart Required. So, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and know Next. And if you have... Uh, you know, an operations manager, you can disable so that it doesn't, uh, I don't have an operation manager, so I'm not even going to bother. Um, it's just a lab environment, but you can say generate alert if 80% is not met, so it's usually your typical, and you can do it every seven days, so I'm just not going to bother with this in the lab environment. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and download uh, updates, and this is a fallback source, whatever, so uh, I don't want the clients to become a branch cache, if you will, so I just deselect that, um, and then I go ahead and do next, and now it's going to create this deployment for the Windows updates, and that's it. So now you want to go over to monitoring, deployments, and so you'll see it show up here. Now, right now, that machine is not checked in, so it's still going to be in the unknown state. This is what I was talking about before. If those machines don't have agents and they're in that group, you're going to get a whole bunch of them that are in that unknown state. So we're going to help this along. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and uh, kind of force it right now. So go to actions, machine policy retrieval. This will this will tell um, this client this hey uh, hey system administrator, SCCM console whatever. Do you have anything new for me? Sure. Um, so it'll take a few minutes. Um, and eventually, I'm going to pause this, uh, and then I'll come back in just a few minutes. All right. It has successfully proceeded. Now, it only took a few minutes. So I'm just waiting to open up the software center because um, it came up with a little notification on the right corner here. And there you go. There's my, there's the, uh, it's installing my updates, as you can see. So I'm going to let this finish installing, and I'll show you what it looks like here shortly. So I'm going to pause this video. Hello and welcome back. Okay, so now as you can see, um, now it already finished installing these updates. Now typically if these updates required a restart, it would say restart down here, but these updates did not require a restart, which is kind of nice, um, even though I told it not to do the updates. So now if I do a refresh over here, um, let me run a summarization first, because sometimes you need to run that, and then do a refresh. Um, and it should c come out of the unknown status. If I click on this machine over here, it'll say more details. Okay, what a, okay, so you go. Uh, let me just kind of do another, there we go. Let's see, so sometimes you have to do some troubleshooting, but this is a good place to kind of look. This is where you spend a lot of your time after deploying updates, coming here and monitor 
what's going on in that environment and what have you. So, and eventually over time, eventually it'll, it'll come out of unknown into compliant later on. But again, you only have, you know, uh, time and stuff like that. So that's basically it. And then one last thing is you have these reports that you can run to determine what's going on in your environment. So I'll just show you where these reports are. If you scroll down here to software um, updates, you have your compliance. You have your deployment states, which is really nice. You can kind of show you the de deploy. This is a very common one, enforcement states of your deployment, meaning it'll show you what's pending, which requires restart, so you can keep track of which machines are. So all these, all, all anything, and then you have customized reports that you can run, and I have some custom reports in my uh, website. Um, so if you have any questions about patch management, or uh, now I'm going to create a whole separate video around Windows 10, so that's coming. So stay tuned. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. There's going to be a lot more content. And thank you for watching. Have a good, have a great day. Bye bye.